and we are live how's it going everyone welcome back to the punch perfect boxing channel before we get going today please make sure to like the video comment your thoughts down below and please subscribe to the channel so i'm going to be talking about chris eubank jr and what comes next for him in his career but also the news headline today that his uh, viewing figures for his fight with liam williams broke records on sky sports so i just wanted to talk about that quickly i'm uh, just going to be looking away for a second as i read out the headline and some of the information for you guys that maybe haven't seen it yet Chris Eubank Jr., over 1 million in-home viewers watched his victory against Liam Williams. A peak Sky Sports in-home audience of 1,500,000 1, saw Chris Eubank Jr. knock down Liam Williams four times, etc., etc. If I scroll down ever so slightly, the average audience of over 585,000 surpassed both Anthony Joshua's 2015 bout with Gary Cornish, as well as the fight between Amir Khan and Samuel Vargas in 2018, with a peak audience of over a million. So, that speaks to the volumes of the weight that Chris Eubank's name holds. Um, just from my perspective, conversations I've had with people that obviously recognise me as kind of the resident boxing fan in friendship groups and stuff, a lot of people have spoke to me, not just about the fight, but beforehand, you know, how did I see it go and what was my prediction and stuff. So I kind of got a sense that this was going to do well this weekend, and not because it was Liam Williams, not necessarily because of the fight itself, but because it's Chris Eubank Jr. And I think Sky are really going to play on that. I've had more people ask me that are kind of my dad's friends and around his age because they know he's Chris Eubank's son. It's the same with Conor Ben. A lot of people around that age ask me how he's doing and saying that they're going to watch him just because of his dad and because of their name. So you do see this in boxing. And I think Chris Eubank Jr. is the guy that Sky want to push as their next pay-per-view, you know, pay-per-view attraction. Um, I've said this for a while now that you know, since they've got Boxer on board, they haven't got a standout name, but I think Chris Eubank is the one that they can definitely mould into that. So they'll be the one that they're looking to push, you know, moving forwards. So what does come next for him? You know, the talk of world titles and stuff, I don't think that's necessarily in the picture at the moment. I think there's too much going on that needs to be needs to be worked out. Looking at each of the world title routes, WBC, that's obviously Jamal Charlo currently. However, it looks like he'll get the Canelo fight. And if not, he has said he'll be moving up to 168 just from all of the things that he said on Instagram and stuff. So that WBC belt will likely become vacant. And if it does, Jaime Munguia and Carlos Adames have both earned the right to fight in a final eliminator for that belt. If it becomes vacant, I'm sure that will just become the championship fight. So that's that route taken care of. The WBC will always favour Munguia and go down the Mexican route anyway. So I don't think that's a viable option. You then move over to the WBO. Demetrius Andrade is obviously the champion there, but it looks like he's set to vacate. He will be moving up to 168. It looks like the belt will stay there in the meantime, and Falcao will fight Alim Canali for the interim title, and then I think will get made the full champion once Andrade decides whether he is moving up to 168 or not. So that's kind of, you know, looks like it's taken care of in the meantime, unless Eubank really wants to face one of those guys. I think Alim Canali is a really bad matchup for him. Um, moving over to the WBA and IBF. So they're both locked up with Golovkin and Murata, who look like they're going to be facing um, after their fight was postponed just just after Christmas. But it looks like it will be going ahead around sort of April, May time. And if it does, it depends what happens there really, doesn't it? Because if it's Murata that wins, which is possible at this stage, they should be able to make a big enough offer to be able to get him over. But if it's Golovkin, he obviously has a lot more options on the table in terms of Canelo. And I think, you know, Munguia will be looking at him as time goes on as well. Golden Boy will pay up big for that fight. There's ties to zone, So I think that I think that all the world titles are wrapped up for at least the next 12 months. Um, maybe even longer than that. But I think just for 12 months alone, you know, this will this will kind of be the, the middleweight landscape. So you're looking at till the end of the year he's fought in in early february he wants to be fighting again and he's now in a position where he can't afford to go back to nothing fights eubank i think sky really need to push him on so for me there's two fights that they can do in order for that to happen now one of them i'm not so keen on but it's a fight that i have said um you can watch all my videos kind of talking about this i've said from day dot that if kel brook beats amir khan he will be the person that gets the next shot um, I know Ben Shalom's come out and confirmed that afterwards, but I've been saying it for quite a long time because Saulan tried to explore it in 2020 or 2021. 
and that was being explored and then obviously both of them went their, their separate routes for whatever reason but I still feel like Kel Brook will, will be willing to make that jump up now obviously Kel's got to win against Amir Khan first and if he does win they've said there's a rematch clause I imagine that rematch clause is there for Amir Khan to activate not necessarily Kel Brook to activate so if Amir Khan wants to have that rematch, and listen, he's in the business of making Kel Kelbrook's career stagnate, so he will want to prevent him from getting another an opportunity like that against Eubank. So you don't know if Amir Khan will play spoiler in this scenario, but if Kelbrook wins this fight, I think he is the name that will go up and fight Chris Eubank. You've got Chris Eubank that's just broke the regular Sky Sports viewing figures. You'll have Kelbrook against Amir Khan, which is going to do massive numbers on pay-per-view, in my opinion, on Sky in the same you know within a couple of weeks of each other both of them are going to have really raised profile at the start of the year obviously this is dependent on Kelbert winning I get that but in an ideal world I think for Sky that's their picture right now I think they want Kelbrook Chris Eubank Jr in the summer or towards the back end of the year I think that's the most logical thing that can happen the other name is obviously Billy Joe Saunders. Now, I think that's also likely, but I think there's more to work out there. In the case of Kel Brook, he will have to go up to 160. There will be no compromise, that will be it. He'll have to go up to 160, which at this stage isn't too crazy for him. I think at 154, he'd even be tight at that weight now as he's getting on. So I think 160 isn't the craziest thing in the world here. But for Billy Joe Saunders... I don't see him making 160. I think he'd have to lose a limb at this stage to be able to make 160. He's not made it for an awfully long time. And he's not lived the best lifestyle between fights. He balloons up in weights. That's why I've said recently, I actually think he might go to 175 if he's looking to get back into boxing. Because 175 has got a big crop of British fighters. And I could see him going up there. So he won't come down to 160. So they do a catch weight because there'll be no title on the line. So they, do they meet in the middle? Do they do it at 164? Or does Eubank go up to 168, which he's more than capable of doing, and it's not so much an issue. I don't like Eubank at 168, but that's when he was against big men like George Groves. I wouldn't like him against a Benavides or a Plant or, you know, one of the big 168 pounders. But going up there against Saunders, who's really a blown up middleweight in all honesty, I think it's okay. So that can work. Then it will just come down to the financials, really. Will they pay Billy Joe what he wants? I imagine Kelbrook will come slightly cheaper than Billy Joe at this stage because Billy Joe has had the Canelo payday. So that's the thing that they've got to work out, really, just on Billy Joe Saunders' availability, his seriousness in wanting to take this fight, and just the logistics. So there's more to work out there, whereas with Kelbrook, I think there's a genuine path for that fight to be made. They've explored it in the past, so they'll know his expectations. And with both of them coming off big... Uh, bigger, you know, bigger audience in terms of their respective fights. I think it will make a lot of sense. It's not a fight I particularly want to see. I think Kel Brook is is too small for 160. I think Eubank there's a weight class for a reason. So I think that will be the fight next. I'd rather see the Saunders fight. In terms of who would win the Saunders fight, I said in a recent video that that playing field has has evened massively when they fought when Saunders was much more a peak athlete at 160 and Eubank was much more was much less um much less schooled he was much more raw and had an edge to him at that stage in his career that was a close fight a lot of people have this especially billy joe have this sort of a uh, remembrance of that first fight that he schooled him throughout when that wasn't the case first six rounds you saw the big gap in ability but as the fight progressed he slowed down massively and chris eubank was able to come in just by being the superior athlete now we see that Chris Eubank's got more ability to him. He still has the same issues, but you know the Roy Jones thing. We're starting to see signs of that clicking, the timing. Um, I think also his punch anticipation, and especially with his athleticism as well. He's now the much better athlete than Billy Joe, who hasn't looked after his body, and has now taken a, a career-threatening injury from from Canelo as well. We don't know how that's going to hold up. I think the odds shift slightly in Chris Eubank's favour, which is a shame because Billy Joe's a much better pure boxer, much better fighter, and um, beaten better opposition as well. But to be honest, I just think at this stage it can come down to athleticism, it can come down to who's fresher, and I think that would favour Eubank. So I quite want to see the Saunders fight. I personally don't feel Eubank is ready for any of those world champions just yet. I think he needs to keep moving towards that direction. 
So I think the Saunders one is the fight that I want to see because I think it's a big fight as well here in the UK. But ultimately, I think the Kelbrook one is the one that will happen. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Firstly, on him breaking the record. Are you surprised by that? But secondly, also who you think he'll face next or who you want to see him face next. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you next time.